This piece right here is entitled Between Huey and Malcolm. Uh. Huey P. Newton had an epiphany once and he said, I don't expect the white media to create positive black male images. So we wouldn't be surprised to see how evening networks accumulate their net worth of billions off assassinating the character of our children. <coughs> they objectively report news about black lives. Matter of fact, when they spin white lies, they evolve into black lies about black lives because we do not matter to them only in terms of their bottom line. Y'all see, our worth in their eyes is somewhere between feline and pigeon. Y'all, we still less than canine. Cause niggas remember how they sent that boy Mike Vick to prison, but be the color of a George Zimmerman, yeah. a private yeah. citizen, wow. and you can legally murder a nigga and walk off scot free. Yeah. Yeah. But Walter Scott can't flee, and Eric Gardner can't breathe, hmm. and Ty Shamilla can't sleep, and Oscar Grant can't see his daughter no more. Hmm. Oh no, this ain't that folklore. Hmm. There's so much more. Four score seven years ago now, nah, before that, man, 16, 19, the first time them white beans brought us to these shores. And since then, it's been all out war. Mm -hmm. Their strategies and their tactics have adapted. They went from de jour to de facto, ipso facto. They tormented and attacked us mm -hmm. to extinguish the light of black souls. Mm -hmm. Theirs is a pathological praxis rooted in a xenophobic, schizophrenic, racially insecure, culturally immature social apparatus which wow. forced them to concoct a reality which confers to them an unearned status of unmerited advantage to make them feel adequate. In turn, we in turn the thugs and the savages hold deck stacked against us. We victims of bell curves, intelligent quotient averages, recipients of jail terms, residents in a ghetto pants labyrinth, and very few of us can survive the madness. And for those that do, them government issue bullets fly faster than light travels from the sun to our planet, that third rock from the sun. He got me Malcolm in the middle, now I'm Malcolm in the window. On third watch, watching the rock daughters and sons. Collision of cop 47, cop for them when they come. Cause we know they will come. Because for us, this land is a Robert Kirkman graphic novel for it feeds off the blood of our young. Y'all, we are the walking dead. Just channeling our inner Tyrese. We ain't destined to make it past the first few letter boxes of the first few sheets. We are akin to proteins and fatty lipids in the belly of the beast. Our appendages are the meat of fleshy mango stuck in teeth to be plucked and sucked in moments after the feast. Now let that digest. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know these words hit hard to the gut like dysentery, <laughs> or hard to the brain like Christian missionaries colonizing souls and minds. No matter how you reduce it, pain is the protocol. You either die or revoke your past and try to pass as something you're not on that ritual dollars on. But y'all, we can't drop out. We can't opt out, especially when them cops is out. Index itchy when them guns come out. We go to sleep dreaming at night wishing it would all run out. And be replaced by something different when the sun comes out. But the day breaks and the morning is here. And we find ourselves in mourning again. And I don't want to see any more mornings where we mourn and kith and kin. So I guess it means that we're back on that Malcolm again. So in essence, it only means we want one thing. We declare our rights to be a man to be a human being, to be respected as human beings, to be given the rights of the human beings. In this land, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary.
Hey, anybody go out that door, man, lock it. Y'all ain't even heard a headline yet. We got two more artists left, y'all. Y'all ready? So next, we gonna bring up this entertainer. Wait on, man. We gonna bring up this entertainer next, but uh, both fans a lot money, y'all. Like, why you looking at him like that? Hey, I got something to say. Got another announcement. This might be my last announcement. You know what I'm saying? We're all my fellas that.
she did it. I said it. I said it. Give me a round of applause for my wife. She said it. She was like, I'm going to pick out. Let me pick out. I love me some poetry. Spoken word. See, because you can speak on exactly how you feel and things others wouldn't have the nerve. You can speak on situations, the things you've seen, the things you've heard. Hell, I wouldn't be mad if you spoke about the trees and the birds. Or the love, if that's how you're feeling. I wouldn't be mad if you spoke about sex, money, and drugs, if that's how you're living. I wouldn't be mad if you spoke about politics, streets, and jails. I wouldn't be mad if you spoke about religion, sinners and saints, heavens and hells. I wouldn't be mad at all, see, because I got the feeling. I got the hearing. I wouldn't be mad if you poured out your soul just to uplift my spirit. Because it helps me get through when times get tough. And I like how you can spit easy. And at times spit rough. About how I had enough and ready to erupt. Or how I'm going to roll up and die. Or how I'm on cloud nine, but it's more of a natural high as the world is passing you by. No matter how hard you try, you keep falling behind. But I love me some poetry. It really helps me get through it. And one of the main reasons why I love poetry is because it's just like music. You can move to it, groove to it. It'll gently soothe your soul like night will to a chest cold. Poetry is my thoughts, my dreams, my anti-stress, so my spirit can rest medicine. And I need another hit. I want to overdose. I want to drown in it. Drown in a whirlpool of possibilities, ideas, and what ifs. And what if it was God sent? Sent from the north, east, west, and south, straight from the heart, processed through the brain, then out the mouth into an ear that's not afraid to hear and fear. Is a spirit I wasn't born with, so even though the end is near, I will cheer. Because my soul is kept. See, poetry is my life, poetry is my death, poetry is what's right, and at the end, poetry is what's left. So I'm going to step to this mic and take a deep breath and say, I love me some poetry. Yeah.